Hello, I'm Martin Dominey and this is my 1975 Land Rover Series 3. I've owned it for around four years now. Um, it's changed a fair bit since I bought it. Mostly things that the previous owner probably should have done while driving it on the road, but also I've upgraded it with things like this worn 8274 winch, which I rebuilt. Uh, it's got brand new Toyo mud terrain tires, Exmoor trim rear canvas. It's got disc brakes on the front rather than the drums that it came with. And overall, I really like it and I really like driving it. The problem is I've already done quite a lot of welding to the original chassis. And to be honest, I'm a bit bored of chasing rust around. So over the next three instalments, we're actually going to be tearing this Land Rover to bits and rebuilding it on a brand new Mayer galvanized chassis. But first of all, just so I don't forget what it looks like, we'll take a little walk around and I'll point out some of the finer details about my Series 3. So this Land Rover would have originally left Solihull with a two and a quarter petrol, but some years ago that's been replaced by a 3.5 litre Rover V8 actually from a 101 Ford Control. Um, it's been converted with really old school bits, obviously back in the day, uh, Milner Phillips conversions were very popular and that's what the majority of the parts used to convert this are. It's not without its faults and, you know, as part of this re-chassis, I'll be looking to rectify some of the things that sort of get on my nerves a little bit about the Land Rover. Um, one of those being, if you look directly at the engine bay, the engine actually sits really far over to the passenger side. So I'm going to introduce a 10 millimeter spacer to centralize it slightly, which will fix a multitude of issues that, you know, day to day, just a little bit irritating. Uh, there's a few more things I'm going to uh, do along the journey of rechassing this. It's probably one of the best times to introduce upgrades because you've got everything in bits anyway. Um, and we'll talk about those in a little while. So bodywork wise, the old Series 3 isn't actually that bad from the cab forward. So the bulkhead is one of the first jobs I did when I first got the Land Rover. Both footwells were rotten, so I had those replaced. But the rest of the bulkhead's pretty good. And actually, from the doors forward, it's pretty free of dents and, you know, any major damage. Even though the paint needs some attention, I'm quite happy with how it is. The problems start at the back of the Land Rover. So let's go over there. So from the outside, the tub's not awful, except this area. It's the same this side as it is the other side. And basically, one, and one of the previous owners has filled it with body filler and then painted it a completely different green to the rest of the car. So uh, yeah, not that great to look at, but the real problems are in the back of the tub where this was previously owned by a village garage so it's been used for carting around engines gearboxes other bulky heavy stuff that's just completely destroyed the, the inside of the tub and there's a lot of gaps a lot of holes a lot of bad repairs so whenever i use this to go camping wh whatever i put in the back tends to get wet if i'm driving on wet roads obviously the exmoor trim three-quarter canvas does a great job of stopping rain getting in from the top but the wheels splash up all that water. By the time you get to where you're going, all your stuff's completely soaked. So I'm actually gonna replace this tub with a good used one that I've bought, tidied up, and I've re repaired it with uh, parts from YRM Metal Solutions because, you know, it's still 40 odd years old. It needed a few bits. And this is exactly what I mean when I say the tub's not in very good condition. It's been so overloaded that the floor supports have pushed up through the aluminium floor. There's all sorts of patches and bits of metal and everything's just bent and, you know, everything leaks. I've tried patching the holes with bits of aluminium tape and chemical metal and hammering things back into shape, but where do you stop? This Series 3's actually been converted from a full-length soft top, which it would have been originally, to a truck cab. 
And actually, I'm not that unhappy with how it is inside. Uh, it's comfortable to drive. It's got nearly new Britpart Deluxe vinyl seats with headrests, which are nice. Um, the dashboard is rough. One of the previous owners has painted it with a brush and it's cracked, as a lot of them are. Um, but it's still got the original six position light switch from the military. I've fitted a Defender TDCI center tray, which is great. It's got cup holders and things like that. Um, and it's, it's scruffy, but it's functional and I quite like it. It's sort of developed character over the time that I've owned it. Um, and yeah, I, I don't think I'll change too much in here. The main thing is the chassis, you, you know. As I said, I've already replaced quite a few bits on there, but it's starting to go elsewhere already. So I just want to do it once and do it right. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with the Mayer long wheelbase military chassis, which is exactly the same as the one it already has. One of the changes I do want to make while I rechassing this Land Rover is replacing the original leaf springs with parabolics. Don't get me wrong, I like multi-pack leaf springs. I think they serve a great purpose, but on this particular Land Rover, the rear being ex-military is so stiff that unless you've got tons of weight in the back, they just don't do anything. I've taken them apart, cleaned them up, greased them, but the fact of the matter is they're just rated too highly for what I use it for. So I'll be replacing all four leaf springs with Britpart Parabolics and all four dampers with Cellular Dynamics from Britpart as well, just because I don't know how old these original dampers are, but they must be quite old because the outer casings look pretty corroded. So that's one of the jobs on the list. I'm also going to give it a fifth gear by putting a ferry overdrive on the back of the original gearbox, which is a job much easier done with the seat box out of the way and the Land Rover in bits. As you can tell, a simple re-chassis is quickly, you know, becoming a little bit more complex because I keep thinking of things I want to do along the way, but it should be good fun. Join us next time when we start taking the Series 3 to bits to start the re-chassis job.